you know, veterans are good at a lot of things. Um, and obviously, ve the veteran community, we're not a monolith. We're not all the same. I don't want to make it sound like we are. We're, it's a very diverse fighting force. It's a diverse group of people, exceptionally diverse, the veteran community. But there are certain things, certain things that overarchingly the veteran community, or rather the people who would feel compelled to serve, uh, certain things they have in common, certain traits they have in common, certain uh, abilities that are developed throughout their span of service. And there are certain industries and career fields that veterans and military family members are very well suited for. And last month was tech month. We were talking about all things tech, right? And we were talking about apprenticeships and opportunities in tech. We're talking about how veterans are very well suited for careers in tech and cybersecurity. Well, now here we are in agriculture month. And I got to tell you, you know, I'm not a cybersecurity analyst, but I'm even less of uh, an expert on agriculture and agribusiness. That's something I don't know anything about. So this month has been very educational for me. Uh, and I've learned a ton from a lot of really smart people. And one of those industries that is that veterans are predisposed to not only be good at, but to be fulfilled in and have success in and to thrive in is agriculture and agribusiness. And there are certain organizations that are key to getting veterans, transitioning service members, military members to fill these voids, these needs in these industries and agriculture and agribusiness is no exception. And today we're going to be chatting with, uh, with an organization, with the executive director of the Wisconsin chapter of this organization, the Farmer Vet Coalition. And their, their main purpose, their mission is to bring service members, to bring veterans cur and currently serving members uh, to embark on careers in agriculture. Now, agriculture is pretty wide, pretty wide. It's not just farming or traditional farming or what somebody from the outside looking in would perceive to be traditional farming. It's not all driving a tractor and milking cows. Agriculture is, is massive. It's a huge industry. And there are a lot of things that are uh, directly related to, or at least tangentially connected to in your everyday life. There's a thousand things that happen that are connected to agriculture and the businesses surrounding agriculture. So today, very excited to have Joe Cook on the show, um, to chat about opportunities in farming and agriculture for veterans. And, you know, if you're watching this and you're a veteran or military, military family member, or even an advocate for the veteran community, and you haven't considered opportunities in agriculture, I think you should give it a look and give it a listen. Because if you haven't considered this before, there are things about this you may not have considered, perhaps because you had a preconceived idea as to what a career in agriculture looked like. Maybe you wrote it off. I'm not going to milk cows. Well, that's not all there is to it. There are tons of opportunities, and I'm excited to learn about those today. I'm excited to chat with Joe Cook, learn about not only the Farmer Vet Coalition, but Farmer, Vol Farmer Veteran Coalition of Wisconsin specifically, because that's, you know, we're the Wisconsin Veterans Chamber of Commerce. We love our Wisconsinite pals. We love our Wisconsinite pals so much that its aura emanates into kind of secondhand love to people in northern Illinois. And maybe Eastern Minnesota, as long as they're still Packers fans, you know, we'll give you a little of that secondary secondhand love. That's how much our love for Wisconsin emanates. And we already got we already got comments coming in. I'm very excited about today, but you didn't come here to hear me talk. We're going to get started right after this.
All right, motivated. Like I said, we have comments coming in already. Sam from Facebook. Facebook wins the first comment award. Battlefields to farm fields. You said it. To talk about that transition and the work that he's doing in this space, our good friend Joe Cook. Joe Cook, how are you? Great, Adam. Thank you for having us on today. Yep, you betcha. So, so tell us a little bit. Uh, give us the cliff notes on what brought you to found the Wisconsin chapter of the Farmer Veteran Coalition. You said you're a veteran yourself, so so take us from there to here. Well, Adam, I'm a Army veteran, seven year Army veteran, and have a farm and ranch over near Baldwin, Wisconsin, in a little town called called Woodville. Seen dairies go bankrupt, multi generational dairies at that. And some of these people are veterans and some are just my neighbors. And that bothers me a lot. Also seeing uh, the uh, people out there that are veterans that can't quite find the connect to bridge from uh, you know, being a veteran into becoming an uh, agriculture person, finding a job in agriculture or, or starting their own farm. So I looked around a bit and I just can't stand by this. So I thought, 16 Moses conference. That's a organic conference held every year in Wisconsin in La Crosse. And I'm not an organic farmer, but I believe they have a lot of truth in what they're doing. So while I was there, I ran across the Farmer Veteran Coalition National Group, and they were just out, you know, trying to offer a good uh, resource for veterans. And it's a, a, actually free to become a member of it. I remember. And it's been great since then. And there were some people at that time, that was February 2016, who were going to start the chapter, but they didn't have the time to do it. And it kind of went by the wayside. So fast forward to 2020, right before uh, the COVID shut us down, I was there in February uh, 27th, 2020, same situation. Someone had the, actually the guy, the president from Illinois was there gave a little speech about it and said, let's have a meeting. So we had the meeting and I told him, I said, we're not going to, I'm not going to stand by this time. And I'm going to have you guys, I'm going to rely on you to become a team with me and we're going to build this and we're going to stand it up. Well, May this year, we, we became an official chapter of the Farmer Veteran Coalition and we are the Farmer Veteran Coalition of Wisconsin. I'm the, the chairman and, and now I've become the president because of, you know, transitioning into an actual, uh, nonprofit organization and we were stood up by the national group and thus we are out uh, looking for members but also uh, we're we're trying to find our support area and we've come up with a, a mission statement for the farm veteran coalition of wisconsin to say that we want to we want to develop mentorship education sponsorship and fellowship and each of those are a pillar of what we're going to do and what we're doing. We went from 370 members that were joined up previously through the national group to 510 in a very short amount of time. And nice. as, as I mentioned previously, well, actually, when we're talking before the farmer veteran uh, farm tech days in Eau Claire, mm -hmm. we're there to grow our membership that's what one of the the primary reasons we're there for so anybody's going to be there in eau claire at the farm days this 20 first 22nd stop by our booth and we will sure talk about the information on how to sign up if you haven't already some of the side benefits of signing up is you can apply for and get a grant for anything related to farming a thousand dollars you don't have to have a big report after you just get the money and you, you know you get to buy the stuff and that's how that works every year in addition Kubota tractor decided that we're a worthy group and they donate five tractors to five lucky veterans each year you know, north south east west uh, regions and central so uh, you just give your story about why you would like that tractor why you need that tractor and it's, generally a need-based thing and they award those they've been on them every year and that's going to be one of our wisconsin support functions is to sponsor uh farmers that are you know veterans that want to become farmers or, or know about it and like you said there's such a vast array of what 
a farmer is. It can be growing bees as an apiary. It could be just growing a small plot city uh, raised bed gardens and providing the community or doing CSF, a community support agriculture and that's sold to people and done in advance on a subscription basis. And you can make a good amount of money at that. There are two co-ops that I know of in this state. One is the Camo Co-op, which is out of the Fox Valley. They're outstanding. Please visit them. And also the Wisconsin Fed Beef Co-op. That's Rod Ofte, and he's a tremendous person, veteran, uh, good guy, and all around just supporting a bunch of cattle ranchers in Wisconsin. And it all comes down to helping people that want to become, uh, uh, want to uh, enjoy agriculture as a profession and an occupation. So we're there to help people transition. And also I want to build this to be something that's also a fellowship. So if we've got a bunch of old salts there getting ready to retire and they're looking for like a, a someone to take over or what they'd like to uh uh, be a mentor to or potentially sell their farm to, uh, you know, transition things, that that is an option from the the oldest to the youngest. And also so that these people out there that are what I call transitioning, that they feel like they're not really in the community and they're, they don't really have an, anyone to talk to about things that they can relate to. Like if you're ever in a war zone, there's just nothing, there's nothing like that, you know. And, and you feel so alienated from society at times that that's where we have a lot of trouble from uh, people coming back with PTSD and, and being isolated and depressed and getting bad pills and all that good, all that terrible stuff that we hear about, but not having anything or anyone to, and especially to transition that into potentially farming. Well, we're going to try to do that as our mission. And once again, mentorship education sponsorship and fellowship are our pillars and we are well on our way to achieving our first year's goals and i i hope to get our entire operational plan published online because we're working on our web page which we don't we're so new we don't have a web page yet but hmm. we're working on that and with that i want to add that it will have our operational plan which is like a business plan you know it's what we're doing and we're a nonprofit, so it's worded slightly different and that's our roadmap to the future and i invite everyone that's listening and, and tell all your veteran friends in wisconsin that uh we hope they'll join and your input will be instrumental on in how we build this and what you know what areas we want and that's everything from like i say from uh, potential city uh or those victory gardens that are like in, in containers on a potential balcony if you're in an apartment or city uh, raised bed gardens on a, a empty lot in, a, in the city down uh, to large scale uh, dairies or, or uh, commodity crops like soybeans and corn that are raised for sale as commodities. And or like I do, I'm a, a beef rancher. So I out with nothing and hacked out a bunch of bunch of woods to make a you no know, i just you know been producing cattle and I just sold 20 of them so it does work and it can work and there's a lot of resources out there also that our members have knowledge of that would be beneficial to most people in that you don't have to reinvent the wheel each time there's some great stuff out there and one of the things i've found adam is that there are 344,780 veterans in the state of Wisconsin. And that was by the, oh. the National Ag St Status Service, Statistical Service. And then also with the Department of Veterans Affairs, I found out that there's uh, 8,800 farms out there that are veteran-owned and right now. And there's about 9,800 veterans that work on farms. So that might be the owners and or you know the the help or the you know it could be a spouse or it could be multiples on the sure. same farm so there's a lot of resources and so um we can grow this group and provide help to people that want help and provide a, a, a place to sit down and and uh, you know have a cup of coffee sometime and talk about stuff if you're interested in farming or want to help up farming or have something to give and would perhaps want to be a mentor and also to really help the state of Wisconsin as our neighbors and our communities seem to be 
uh, in decline because of the the, st the state of how businesses run today. Our farmer aging out, it's called, and we need a lot of replacement farmers for the, the farming community, agriculture as a whole. So there's a lot of opportunity. And I think because I am one, this was the perfect transition for me because I tend to be independent and self-sufficient. And that's just like what I did in the military. It's just, I, you know, a lot of times you have to have one when you're out there. And, and a lot of military that, and they would like to be out for an occupation and be their own boss. And it just really works well for veterans, I believe. And uh, like Fred Smith, who started FedEx, well, he was a big uh, he was a big logistics guy. He built FedEx, you know, he's not with us anymore. But, you know, just those things uh, that are, are out there that people, their callings. Uh, this was a calling for me, and I know it's been a calling for a lot of veterans also. And with that, I'm really glad to have this thing started up and ask this entire group to, to thrive and have uh, ever-increasing membership and, and really provide a a good resource for veterans and, and their families also. And we, we have a category for, uh, uh, at, oh, it's an associate category. It's not a veteran because if they're not a veteran, they can't be, you know, a veteran uh, person in the this group. But it's the things with with the entire families that make a lot of difference. If, uh, if you can bring in your entire family into a farming endeavor, that is beneficial according to people I talk to that are in uh, mental health support groups and two things with side you know two things about farming and people if farmers injured or if their family is in disagreement with the farm that's the biggest reason for failure of farms it's odd but I can see that if you can't do the work you know you're gonna feel like failure and you're just gonna if it goes away you know you can see that and then if your family's not into it with you you know you're gonna be isolated by yourself out there trying to do it all it's not as profitable, but it's good, honest work. Right Every on. morning or evening when I'm done, I feel very, very self-satisfied that, ah, that was a good day's work, you know? Any yeah, questions? I believe it. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that all sounds good. I just wanted to back up a little bit, you know, to talk about, you know, more specifically about the program offerings for the coalition, like what the coalition does specifically to help pair veterans with those jobs in agriculture and we actually had a great question or a great comment from a uh, facebook viewer sam he says i've looked into it and they want you to have experience in farming beforehand though so what would you say uh, is that true would you what would you say to the veteran that's like you know i would love to get into agriculture but i don't have any experience i don't know anything about farming are they exempt or can they join in the fund too? Do they have a future career in agriculture potentially? Absolutely have a career, a potential career. And it, just like most things, it, it, it comes down to where you look. And with we have a, a, a vast variety of resources that I've found with um, agribility and also with uh, Compeer Finance for beginning farmers and mm -hmm. various uh, farm service agency support. And with that, uh, the best thing I believe to do would be to talk to a mentor about what type of farmer farming you intend to do because you can't just go out there and, and expect to just a thousand acre farm, which is about the size it takes to do row crops nowadays to, to be profitable mm -hmm. and all the equipment and all the different inputs needed like the seeds and the fertilizers and the different specific things you can't just go do that without without learning about it and the best right. way to do that is to do either an internship or mentorship program where someone's willing to teach you and there are a variety of those there, there are uh, we get calls frequently from farm owners that offer up uh, things and we need to put this system together so it's more of a uh, cafeteria style plan where you can look and see, well, I'd like to try this, or I'd like to do dairy, or I'd like to, you know, dairies, by the way, you can always get a job in and learn that. They're always looking for people. If you wanted to do something like, oh, cranberries, perhaps there's a, a, a veteran owned cranberry farm just outside of, I believe, Toma. They're just recently mm -hmm. in the news and they're real supportive of hiring people. I, I've received a, um, 
support from a, uh, a foundation that's called the Nicholas Sergi Foundation. And they're out of, uh, I think, not Elk Mound. It might be Oak Grove, kind of mm. on the west side of the state there. And they've been helping us. And they were looking for people that potentially help with raise of their cattle. So if okay. if you wanted to start out in the, the uh, raising beef cattle, uh, that's a good opportunity. And there's a, a variety of them out there. With the... Uh, uh, with anybody starting out in farming, it's it's always going to be you have to have a good plan because banks and, and uh, uh, lenders generally won't consider it serious if you don't have a good roadmap to success. And right. you won't always make it right. You'll better that's a good learning process, but a lot of times you will, and that's the key to it. And that's where most people are are striving to. That's what they're trying to do. So. With that, I think that there's a lot of opportunities there, and we hope to, we as the farmer of Wisconsin, hope to do regional meetings so that uh, similar to the USDA's uh, reads in Wisconsin, we do the same thing because some areas are prone to growing cranberries. Uh, my area is more prone to growing uh, beef cattle and row crops. And down south, there's kind of the same thing. Up north, it might be more uh, uh, timber or or other uh, commodities that are just just uh, groves. Sometimes apple groves. And uh, one of our one of our members has a, a orchard, and that's what he does. And that's another type of farming, ranching is you know orchard uh, grow, growing apples. So hmm. vast variety of stuff. And even if it's just you have a, a city lot. And you do, you you can become a CSA uh, seller. And what that is 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 you tell people you're going to deliver, and you have to do this though, otherwise you lose your business. Uh, you deliver ten or one hundred or one thousand boxes of of produce and food per month or per week, depends on how you set it up. And people pay as a subscription service up front. So that really works good in your favor to get the right seeds and get all the things you need and uh, get into business relatively low investment. But you have to be able to produce that then. So you have to um, potentially rent land, which is a, a relatively easy thing to do with farming today. A lot of people will rent land. And a lot of times when you're driving on the freeway, you see those uh, little plots where the people might have uh, – you know, a 100 by 100 plot and they're growing their own vegetables or they're doing that for a CSA. And then there are actual larger farms that are CSAs that they produce and will hire you on to to learn it if you want to be an intern or a, uh, as a mentorship program. And then when you get there, when you're there, like one of the things I did was I found a lot, excuse me, I found a, a, a good area with a nice house and just the right type of soil I wanted to start cattle ranching and was able to use the VA loan to purchase the house. And the land was kind of as a secondary function of the, the loan process, which you can hmm. do. But generally, the VA will not lend you money for a, a farm, but they will for a house. Right. And if you have sufficient land attached to that house, there you go. And I got right roughly on. 40 acres with mine. So, yep, it worked well. And But I tell you, I had to I had to tear down some uh, some brush and put up some fences and it was years of work and, and a lot of strategy to get there with all the the equipment needed um uh you know, squeeze shoots for doctoring them and and loading in and out and uh, you know sick cattle areas things like that so you can do it just plan it effectively and we can help you uh, with the resources that uh we we have from experienced farmers right on and i just wanted to throw out there for anybody that's watching whether you're watching on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitch, or YouTube, if you have questions for Joe Cook or questions about the Farmer Vet Coalition uh, or questions about careers in agriculture, opportunities in agriculture, ways that you can get a job or start a farm or do you know anything in between, uh, throw them in the comments and I'll, I'll definitely be sure that we address them uh, here at some point before we adjourn. So, so Joe, let's say I am a soon to transition veteran. I'm going to be relocating to Wisconsin. And I don't have any experience in farming, but my dream has been to have a organic family farm 
and sell fresh produce to people. I want to, I want to start a business. I want to start a career. So I, I reach out to you. What do you say? What do you ask? What do you tell? How do you help me get from point A to point B? Adam, I would ask you what you were thinking of producing and if it's a viable option for you know going forward in the the short and middle and long term you know if it's something that's uh, uh it's, if it's doable and, and mm. if it's something in organic farming i would think that the best resource and especially for beginning farmers is moses it's a group of the midwest uh organic sustainable education systems they have a beginning farmer program Tom oh, Manley okay. is one of their their managers there, and he's also on our board of directors. I recruited okay. our board of directors to be experts and subject matter experts in their fields, specifically for veterans and our members. And so, we uh, side note here: we have Paul Dietman. He's a senior lending uh, guy from Compeer Finance. He's the farm credit representative that we needed, and he's mm-hmm. wrote books on. A farm financing. I mean, he is oh, wow. the, uh, a sought after speaker, uh, mm. Paul Dietman. And we have uh, Tom Manley, of course, from Moses. We also have Arch Morton from Farm Bureau. He's from okay. uh, the, the Lord Cross area. And we have Chris Holman from the Farmers Union. He's got his own uh, excellent CSA in organic farm over by uh, Stevens Point. And he's also one of the directors in Farmers Union. And we have Amanda Hargath from AgriAbility. So if there's any things that you need to be, that the special needs you might have to adapt equipment or, or your farm, they will help. And they have really good outreach program to help people in getting farms to get started, and especially for underserved populations. So that's an excellent right group. And yet we have a lot of resources. That's the that's the good thing about a coalition. And for 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 those of you that don't know, like, What's the difference between an association or a coalition or a, or any other nonprofit? Dictionary definition wise, and you can tell just by talking to Joe, a coalition is a collective of, of people and organizations that pool resources and get people what they need. And clearly, Joe's a guy that knows everybody in the industry, especially in Wisconsin, and is able to to connect you with, you know, with the resource that you need to take your particular path. Because if they were an organization trying to know everything about agriculture and tell you, you know, personally everything you need to know, like that's a lot because it's such a broad thing. You know, that's why a coalition is powerful because a person with a powerful network and personal subject matter expertise in farming and agriculture can leverage their connections to get specialized support. You know, so specialization benefits a society and an economy. You know, the the old saying or adage, I think I just butchered it, but uh, you, you, you know what I'm saying. But that's a good thing about a coalition. It's exciting. So as, as, as an organization, I mean, it's clear that you, if I have needs, I want to be in, uh, I want to have a career in farming. I reach out to you. You put me in the right place. So what are your needs as an organization? Like what, what helps you keep the lights on and what, what provides you with the support and resources you need? to help more veterans? Are you, are you looking for uh, paid members, sponsors, personal donations, corporate donations, grants? What sort, of, what sort of stuff would be, if somebody wants to help, maybe they don't want a career in agriculture, but they believe in what you're doing and they want to support you. What, what, what helps you? Well, Adam, our biggest help would be sponsorship. Uh, mm. Of all the, all the businesses in Wisconsin, that would be tangible proof that we're doing the right thing by them backing us, knowing what our mission and the outcome is to, to help uh, all those uh, up and coming farmers that are, that are going to be replacing the the current crop or the current group of farmers that there are, because that's what's happening right now. I think over half of them are due to retire within the next few years. And if injuries come into play, that really increases it. But just about half of Wisconsin farmers are due to retire in the next few years. Dude, Due to the baby boomer generation uh, aging out, it's called. You know, it's like Does the world getting we older. Have, you know, just, do we have a do we have a crisis looming then? It, well, I don't consider it a crisis. I just think that not enough of farmers' families want to continue on in farming. It's it's changing hmm. 
it, it's just changing. And so with that, sure. there are there there are a lot of there's a tremendous need for farmers and people to step up and get go into those businesses to do it. Otherwise, we will suffer from what is seen in some of the the industries today, where big business comes in and just takes it all over, and it could right. be foreign owned businesses at that that I've encountered personally. So, I think that we absolutely need to uh, have up and coming young farmers start out, and we have a multitude of programs to do that. To me, grants are really nice, and they're they're beneficial and useful, but uh, I. I'd almost rather go with sponsorship for the the companies that are that are potential suppliers of the the goods that farmers use. You know, tractors, seeds. You know, uh, uh, tools of the trade. Uh, tractor Supply is also one of our supporters. Just side note, and Gumplers also. Uh, so nice things like that matter. That these people are behind us and want to support us, and that's what I want to see. Is ideally, if, if we had all Wisconsin-based companies like Menards or uh, something like uh, uh, oh, other other groups, maybe Fleet Farm, they're not necessarily Wisconsin-based, but things that, mm -hmm. that they know their market is predominantly farmers, and that would be ideal for me to, to help and, and for them to help us to grow these next-generation farmers and veterans that might just need that, that break to get into farming transition and just maybe it's just something of sitting down and talking about stuff and the things they've been through to transition them out of that and not feeling alone but as there we're another support group and we're farmers and we're kind of down home community farmers at that i so, love it yeah and that's, that's yeah. there is stuff. no there is no charge to join okay there, there so no like, I, like individual ever. membership is free to join the this community right Yep. Absolutely. That's and very not, cool. It's uh, good to know. We're not doing yep. yep. And that, scrolling that's across the, the bottom of the page impressive there. To me. Oh, sorry. I got you on a little bit of a delay there. I didn't mean to speak over you. Um, but uh, you can connect with the Farmer Vet Coalition of Wisconsin. You can see on Facebook, scrolling across the bottom there, if you have any follow-up questions, if we have piqued your interest in a potential uh, uh, lucrative and fulfilling uh, career, in agriculture, uh, reach out to, to Farmer Vet Coalition Wisconsin. They're here. They're here. Uh, Joe's here. His team is here to answer your questions, and it, it doesn't hurt to ask, especially if if you're you're thinking about a career transition or if you're on the heels of a military to civilian career transition. Uh, Joe's definitely somebody that, that you want to talk to because there are a lot of opportunities. And as he he said, baby boomers are retiring. Half of our farms are going to become in in occupado here that and are going to need strong leaders to take over and and bring this industry in our state into the next uh, the next decade and beyond. Uh, and and you know we're partial, but we think veterans should lead the way. Uh, I think we'd be pretty good at right. it. Uh, and I think you'd be pretty good at it. So, uh, Joe, I appreciate you uh, sharing your insights and, and everything that you're doing for the veteran community. Thank you so very much. I'll ask you to hang on the line here for just a minute while I close things out. Do you have any anything that you want to say to 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 round things out here? Well, thank you, Adam, for providing this opportunity for me to discuss and speak about the Farmer Veteran Coalition of Wisconsin. I'm hoping you'll invite us back maybe next year. We'll see what's going on, what's changed, and, and how we can help out. And I like your book that I saw that, that you're producing. That sounds like a real good uh, real good endeavor also. That's tremendous. Ooh. It's good to see other thank people you doing for the, things. Thank you for the plug. The check is in the mail. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> all right, hang on the line for just a second, Joe. That was really cool. And if you are all... Uh, even slightly curious about potential opportunities in farming, agriculture, agribusiness, uh, definitely reach out to Joe and really you should connect with Joe either way. He's a nice guy and he knows, man, he just knows so much you can tell. Uh, so it was really good to chat with him. It is agriculture month. We have two, uh, great, two more great guests coming up this, this, uh, this month. I won't spoil it by saying anything in advance, but stay tuned, follow us, look for, um, uh, linktree.com backslash WI Vets Chamber to follow us, to take a look and follow us across all platforms. There's so many platforms. Oh, look, there it is scrolling across the bottom. Linktree.com backslash WI Vets Chamber. You can find us on, uh, we're everywhere. 
You know what I mean? You can find us everywhere. You should follow, subscribe, whatever. Don't miss a thing because uh, we're going to keep those those uh, that value and those resources coming your way. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Same time, same place. Next week, Wednesday, 1130 a.m. Central. Have a great rest of your week.